Hello everyone, Dr. Pink with you here today and we have a very fun video. Have you ever wondered whether gaming makes you smarter? Okay, does being a gamer make you a smarter person? Well, we're going to answer that question today, okay? And if you don't know, this is your first time on the channel, I am a scientist, I have a PhD in a rehabilitation science and my actually expertise is really interpreting knowledge. That's really what a PhD is all about. Uh, interpreting scientific knowledge to answer really any question. The question doesn't have to be related to my field because I, I'm trained to essentially interpret all kinds of scientific knowledge. And so what we're going to do is we're going to answer your questions uh, that you have if you're just curious about, hopefully related to gaming, mind you, uh, we're going to answer those questions with scientific knowledge. So we're going to try our best to confirm every question that we kind of come up with. But today's question is, does gaming make you smarter? Interpreting knowledge is, is, is seriously a skill and it's something you have to be trained in. Scientific knowledge, mind you. You have to be trained in this. And even then, uh, like... And different scientists might have a different opinion and this is why scientists usually get into arguments all the damn time okay uh, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look up the highest level of evidence there is to humans you humans right now and no that's not your uncle telling you this happened okay no we are gonna look up meta-analysis so we're gonna look up a meta-analysis which is the highest level of evidence We'll have a video explaining all this kind of stuff later, but I'll, I'll briefly mention it as we go. A meta-analysis is the highest level of evidence we as humans have to confirm that something is, for lay terms, true. Nothing is true in real life to a 100% degree. Nothing, I would say. Uh, but we do our best mathematically, statistically, to try and make something true, and that is through a meta-analysis. That's why it's the highest level of evidence. So video games. Now the question is, what is smart, right? How do you measure smartness? Ooh, that's a tough one in its own. And that could be a whole video that we're not going to bother with today. But let's say cognitive performance, okay? Effects. So we're going to type in some nice keywords into PubMed. PubMed is a scientific database. I'm not supposed to. I'm not supposed to tell undergraduate college students this kind of information. That no, nothing in your textbook is true. Nothing in this world is really ever black and white. There's always a shade of gray in between. And I'm not supposed to even teach college students that because. People think like, oh my God, no, if you train humans to think in none, a non-black and white fashion, they're going to rebel and they're going to do all the, you know, they're just going to, they're going to be all out of the box. Like they're going to be lost because humans take, you know, confidence in things that are true and false and black and white. Y you feel comfort knowing that something is that hard and true. But in fact, in reality, nothing really is. Um, so let's get to it here. All right, we can just read the abstract. I bet we can already. 17 RCTs, all right, 1,000 participants. That's pretty good. Random effects meta-analysis found extra Shadow games. This one. is like our Set. number one article. Five. We found one article, and like this is our article right here. Ezra games significantly improved global cognition and when comparing to physical activity interventions. Okay, furthermore, benefits of extra games were observed for both healthy older adults and clinical populations with cognition uh, conditions associated with neurocognitive. Okay. In this meta-analysis, what they did was they pooled everything out there in terms of a clinical trial. So a person like me, a professor, we apply for a government grant to conduct what is called a clinical trial. And usually that takes hundreds of thousands or even up to five million dollars to conduct a clinical trial to try and confirm something is true. Uh, and so there's 17 of these and that's pretty dang good. Uh, for this kind of small niche area, that's pretty dang good. They have a thousand people. That's actually pretty good for a lot of these meta-analyses. I've seen meta-analyses with much, much smaller numbers. So we're looking at pretty confident Creative anxiety. kind of results we're looking Set. at here. W now we're looking at the effect chair, size. One this chair, G, I know chair, this doesn't mean anything chair, to you. But this chair, G one. is really talking about the kind of a strength 
of the meta-analysis finding. And this is pretty much a moderate effect, which is pretty good for what we are trying to do here. And cognition is actually something that's very hard to measure and something very hard to improve statistically. So this is a moderate effect that, and we're looking at, ooh, it's actually quite a, so this CI is the confidence interval. So we're 95% confident that the effect was either like a really high moderate or actually low, like low to almost non-existent, small effect. Uh, so it, it like it ranged from like a small to a medium effect, all right? And that's very important. So you never take, so for example, when I first was talking about this, I said, oh, hey, great. Like it does it, right? And then you were probably like, okay, we don't need to look at this anymore. But the problem is this is why you have to be an expert at interpreting this knowledge. There's no black and white here. Yes, they found a statistically significant finding, but the strength is moderate. The ASAP confidence, and we're not that confident in this actually, because there's a good chance this that thing? there could be small to no effect here, okay? And that's what the 0.18 is. A zero means there's no effect. And this is really close to zero, 0 0.18, okay? So very interesting. Even though it was statistically significant, indicated by this p-value. The p-value has to be less than 0 0.05, okay? So very, very interesting here, right? So... We're going to look into this paper now to see if we can come up with a little bit better answer to just, yes, playing pop one makes you smarter. But apparently this paper says that playing XR games, XR games, this is an XR game. Pop one's an XR game. Fight me on that. Pop one is an XR game. So this article is saying that an XR game can make healthy older adults and adults with cognitive disabilities have Epic better Butterfly global cognition. I can actually critique each step of this article. That's how I am trained to do, but we're not gonna do that. We're looking at their statistical methods. I am definitely not gonna bore you with their statistical methods. But for example, just like I was saying before, they even have a nice uh, nice reference here. A, I was telling you that Hedges G, or that G, was zero point, I believe it was like 0 0.4 something. And they even say that a, a, a G of less than 0 0.2 is small. A G of greater than two to eight is moderate and large is above 0 0.8. So we know that they found a moderate effect size. They're moderately, this is like a moderate, what, how do you interpret this in the lay terms? Extra gaming will have a moderate effect on global cognition. That is how I would say it as a scientist. And <laughs> so it will moderately improve your cognition later. terms, all right? Uh, so let's get to it. So they even have that here. That's very helpful. Uh, they did a good job. I'm actually trained to critique these kinds of articles too. I do so for journals sometimes. I, nowadays I'm too busy to even think about doing that for journals, but I used to. They actually did a really good job here on presenting their stuff, just even from a skim. That's how well good I am at this kind of stuff. Uh, so they went through 3,000 articles. They ended up with 17. Uh, they excluded some for many, many reasons, and you just have to do so for quality control. And for this kind of method, statistical analysis, you need things to be very kind of similar when you run the analysis piece of it, which we're not even going to talk about. All right. Ah, here's very important. So what are the kind of people? So you're, you're in your mind, we should say, what kind of people does global cognition improve for? Well, the kind of people they had was, 69, huh? 69, their mean age, the average age of the people in their study was 69 years, but the youngest they had was 17. So hey, like people like Lil G in the comments here actually like uh, are, could, were included in this. So this is actually a wide range, that's great. We want it to be a wide range because then we're a little bit more confident about it applying to everyone, right? So really cool. This includes young adults here, that's awesome, excellent. Almost 50% female and male. Great. That's a good representation. When you have a thousand people, that's fantastic. Okay. Now, thousand people split into two groups here. We have an extra gaming group and then we have a control group. So it's really only 460. So you have to keep that in consideration, but it's still a lot of people. It's very hard to do these kinds of studies in real life when everyone in real life is so busy. But, anyways, yes, let's get to. Uh, D Lil G's question. He brought up an excellent question here that I skipped over. What did they classify as XR games, right? That is a great question. Common examples of XR games. 
include the Nintendo Wii, along with or Wii Sports, or the Microsoft Xbox Connect. Additionally, here's really cool. <laughs> virtual reality systems. Additionally, virtual reality systems which use extra bikes or treadmills as a medium to interact with three-dimensional worlds. Now, I've seen a lot of this technical lingo. For you and me who know virtual reality, that's not virtual reality. Honestly, none of that's virtual reality to me. I never considered the Nintendo Wii or the Xbox Kinect to be virtual reality. But in a lot of these scientific papers, you see that they actually include those things as virtual reality. In my mind, that's not. But on paper, it is virtual reality. So there is no, for example, MetaQuest 2 here or anything like that, right? Which is kind of a kind of an L, a loss. But as you and I know, if we're using the MetaQuest 2 or we're using any of these handheld controllers with a serious head-mounted display, that we're getting better immersion than a damn Nintendo Wii or Xbox Connect. And hell, I'm way more physically immersed in it as well. So I'm thinking that the effect will probably be larger for a more seriously immersive experience. That's my guess as an expert in this area. Uh, but that was a great question. Goodness, goodness. All right. So let's see what year this is because that would dictate. So this was done and this was published in 2017. And if you don't know the process, it takes about a year to publish it. And then it probably took them two years to do it because it takes really hard to do these kind of studies when you're busy. Uh, so realistically, they probably included papers. And I bet you we can do this from the eligibility criteria part. They probably only included papers up until they usually have this in the eligibility section. Aha, January 4th, 2017. Oh, that's, that's actually really good. So what happened was the reviewers, the people like me who review it goes, you gotta do an updated search, get all the latest stuff. And so they probably did another one in January 2017, but they definitely did one before that. So, okay, this is up to date until 2017 apparently, all right? Uh, and clearly like quests and all that weren't the thing yet, right? So this is before that time, so pretty cool good to know uh, so this is all the studies that they actually had you can see the parkinson's schizophrenia healthy old adults you can see all the different populations here parkinson's disease i work with these kinds of groups uh people post stroke let's see here ah here's more of the games they talk more of the games uh they had for example probably just dance yeah interactive dance games that's just a nice way of saying uh, just dance or dance dance revolution yeah pressure sensitive dance watch <laughs> i love how dance dance revolution is described so like professionally here uh virtual reality kayaking uh aerobic e okay microsoft connect to do aerobic exercise okay so interesting 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 all right so here we go to the effects and this is the money shot. Uh, let's open this in a new tab. It's that important. All right? I know this is blurry. They, this is the best we got, it looks like. Uh, but this is the results of that statistical method that I keep talking about, the meta-analysis. You run this into a software and that takes a lot of work to get into and process accordingly. And <clears throat> So this line, this middle line here where my mouse is, is Excel zero. Excel Guerrero, 619. The further to the right said, that this is, the further over to this way that this is, the better VR in terms of seeing an effect. As okay? the if it's on the left side of this, that VR means there's no effect no or a negative. Days. It would be like a decline in cognition if you went on this side, the left side. So this is called a forest plot. And this black thing kind of represents the mean of all like this like the average of all these dots averaged together so each one of these is a different study showing the effect the strength of the effect Guerrero, on 619. And so the average is about Said, this what 0.4 something with that the they mentioned before VR yes 0.436 down like here I can read. you might not be able to i think it's 0.436 yeah 0.44 uh and so it's that small to moderate effect or moderate effect here and you'll note that there were a few all the way out here, which is kind of cool. And that's not normal. You do see these. They might have been a smaller sample size. No, they weren't. This one had a really strong effect, which is very interesting. Uh, but this is this should make you feel confident 
when you see this because a lot of these studies showed positive effects, okay? And that's really cool. That's good to see. But this is the money shot. This is what you interpret. I honestly didn't have to look at anything else in this paper, and I could just look at this, and I could tell you what happened if I knew what was going on in the study. But we have to answer this question. What the hell is global cognition, right? That's probably what you're thinking, and that's what I'm thinking, and I'm the one who's an expert in this. And the reason why I'm thinking that is because there's many, many, many ways to measure global, global cognition, and there's no perfect way. There's no perfect way to measure anything in this world, but certainly cognition. It's very hard. Uh, usually it includes some kind of computer doing a task on a computer. Alright, where's the methods? I need to see the methods and I need to see how they measured this here. Primary outcome. This was defined as a total change in any, any clinically validated measures of overall cognitive function. It's still very vague. Overall cognitive function. How do you determine what that means? Cognitive outcome. Okay. Where the total change in order, that is still really very vague. If you know this field and you know this area, that's still very, very vague. Does that mean it's a brain scan? And does, it, does that mean it's some kind of brain scan or brain imagery where they looked at neural activation, frequency? There's so many ways that that can be interpreted. It, was it a task? Was it a computer task that they had to do? There's many of those. Was it a paper task? There's so many ways here. and. I am actually very concerned because they didn't specify this very well here. That's not good. There's, there's so many ways to define cognition, global cognition. See, I told you, executive function. So executive function is a large umbrella term for a variety of, of, of uh, cognitive skills you have. But in executive function, there's like many functions. Executive function is an umbrella term for a variety of cognitive skills that we that are that are pretty much over our kind of selective skills you have cognitively uh, and the re easiest way for me to say this is oh god how do i say this in lay terms uh, executive function is pretty much like your ability to think about tasks and execute tasks critically as well as uh critically as well as uh fast and accurately that's probably the best I'm gonna get at that. Uh, with um, also like ah man, with also uh, like your memory involved in that. Guerrero, well, too. Man, there's so many of these skills. Said. I'm telling you, with executive function, what is interesting is that there has been studies that shown if you have higher levels of executive function, you are more likely to exercise more. You are more likely to manage your diet better and have better nutritional habits. So you're more likely to be in better health. Uh, and so you're also, if you have executive function, you're more likely to adhere or to do what your doctor, your doctor tells you to do, like your prescription. Like it, it's such an interesting thing, executive function. That's why they use it in all these papers. Um, but yeah, that's what executive function is. Let's get back to it and we'll end up here. I think we're nearing the end of this question here. Excellent. Okay, they compared to physical activity. Hmm. 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 This is interesting. This is very interesting. So they're trying they're trying to compare exert games with just general physical activity. Because I, I think one of the questions we had earlier was, does exercise in VR translate to exercise in real life? Well, they're trying to actually compare. Is exercise in VR, their their definition of VR, is exercise better in VR than it is in real life for cognition? That's what they're trying to find out here subgroup analyses of only nine studies it's only nine studies and that's not a lot found moderately greater effects on cognition from exer games versus standard aerobic exercise alone that is a huge statement right there okay that is actually probably the coolest piece of information we've had in this video so far that's vr related to you vr enthusiasts all right so Highlight that sucker. Uh, what that's actually telling you, I mean, it makes sense for me and I can explain it, but what that's trying to say <laughs> is essentially if you do aerobic exercise alone, you go on a treadmill, right? For example, you compare it to a treadmill, which is probably what they had in a lot of these studies, or a stationary cycle. If you can, when I now, how usually they do these VR exercises in these studies is someone like me, literally, like one of my studies could have been in here, maybe. Uh, so, or a study that I'm tied with. Uh, what they do 
is we do is we usually give someone a VR headset, or these days, at least what I do, is I give someone a VR headset and I go, okay, to improve your blood-related health, which is actually one of my clinical trials going on right now, you have to do a minimum of 150 minutes of serious moderate intensity exercise every week, okay? Moderate. And now, yeah, I have to make sure you're in that moderate range, but you have to do that every week, right? And for 12 weeks, you know, something like that. And there's, and we're saying, they're saying, they're saying that that kind of prescription in a VR headset, in a VR headset, is better than me just saying, okay, Timmy, you got to do 12 weeks of treadmill exercise, 150 minutes a week, three times a week, right? Now, for me, this is important because I can tell a kid, for example, and I always, I did this already anyways, but I could tell a kid, for example, you need to get your aerobic exercise. Unfortunately, your health profile isn't looking good. You're really at risk for this kind of health condition. So you should be doing aerobic exercise. Well, hey, I've got the method for you. You can do virtual reality exercise. You can go play. I don't think, pop, I don't know if population one counts unless you're like diamond division level and you're playing climbing and you're playing at a high intensity. I don't, I don't think normal, casual population one play really counts as moderate or like low to moderate physical activity. And like I'm kind of the expert in this area. Like, I think it's like low intensity activity if you're not playing at like the highest level. But I might prescribe like Beat Saber if they can play on like hard difficulty or like you know somewhere where it is intense. But I would actually prescribe uh, Les Mills Body Combat or like one of the punching ones like Fit VR or something like that where it is serious intensity exercise. But I can prescribe that and go, hey, do this for three times a week. You're, it's, you're probably going to get better effects on your cognition. You're going you're gonna to have better executive function, not just global cognition because who the hell knows what global cognition You're going to have better executive function. And that means you're pretty much going to be able to perform a lot of cognitive tasks better. And that is my answer to today's question in a nutshell. So we answered through research evidence, what, <laughs> like, does playing pop one make you smarter? And the Lee short answer is, and we can go all the way back to said, the abstract, and I know you can't see on small to the screen, side, but the short the answer is, the there is a moderate effect study as to of whether playing extra games in the virtual reality, side. their version of virtual reality, a moderate effect of playing virtual reality extra games on your global cognition. So, in short, if we had to put it black and white, because I know you feel comfortable in black and white, yes. Extra games make you smarter. They improve your executive function to help you perform different cognitive tasks better. Now, a little bit addition to this paper because this is the part where I put my interpretation in and this is not evidence-based, this is expert-based, all right? But I am anticipating that the effect is probably stronger for our current types of virtual reality games. This was done in 2017 before the serious head mounted displays that are consumer available and cheap that like have serious intense exercise games in it like uh, like you know can do. So I'm anticipating the effect is stronger. I wouldn't say it's a large effect probably. It's probably not going to bump up that high, but it's probably going to be a stronger moderate effect now with our serious immersive games versus what they did in this paper, okay, which is very interesting. Uh, and so I think that's really cool. Uh, and the cool thing for me in my area is that, guess what? It's all arms. It's all arm exercise, right? And that's a good thing. And now you might be standing, and yes, it's better exercise if you are standing, but it's really mostly arms. And that's a good thing. Why? Because if you're not able to stand or you're not able to walk, like you use a wheelchair, or you can't walk or stand for long periods of time, you have some joint issues, you can still get some serious aerobic exercise from sitting and playing a damn video game. And that's why I do the work I do in research, actually. And I firmly believe in this kind of area. So, of course, it's biased. And that's how it is. But that's just how it's going to be when you're watching this kind of video from a VR kind of eSport player, whatever you want to call it. But otherwise, I hope you learned something in this video. We're going to do another one. Leave comments. Fight with me about the discussion if you want in the comments below. Leave your take on it. Put in some nether, put in some other questions 
for me to like look into. If I see a really good question that really kind of inspires me, hey, I'll get right into it. We'll do more Guerrero, of these. Guerrero, uh, six hundred and nineteen. Really interesting ones, hopefully. Said. Uh, and just leave a question. Who knows? Maybe we'll pick it. We'll do a video on it. But thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. It really helps support the channel. I'm gonna be doing whole channel on this eventually. But otherwise, have a good one, Dr. Pinko. All right, so okay, we right here. We're already getting stuff into my Absi area, underscore which is, TTV. Which is awesome. Said but, okay. The effect now, now is where we get to the interpretation time. part. It's obvious, yes, but rather hear it from you, Doc, and why? Now I like that question you have, Absi. This is an open. Since I'm doing this on, I'm going to do this two times. I'm going to do this on stream, where it's more of an open dialogue with you. And yes, I can answer your questions. And yes, I can answer your question. Uh, your question was, does age reflect on reaction time? It's obvious, but rather hear it from you and why. See, this is why I'm doing this, and I think it's really exciting, because I can answer these questions, and I can, I can put a nail in the coffin for you on it. Uh, the answer is yes, okay? But it, it's better than that. I, I can tell you a better explanation as to why that is a yes answer, okay? There's, there's many, many reasons. First off, as you know, as you age, really your body degenerates. We as humans weren't living as long as we do now, you know, like a few generations ago, right? The average life expectancy was like much, much lower than it is now. It's not unheard of to live into your 90s or 80s, right? Uh, versus, you know, 30 years ago, that, that was a big deal, right? 40 years ago. So what I'm trying to tell you is yes, your reaction time certainly gets worse over time. Now, this is the reason why, okay? This is what reaction time actually is, okay? So let's say it's VR because you're a pop one player. So you are seeing something visually through your eyes, right here, and I'll get closer to the camera. You're seeing something visually here through your eyes, okay? And so your eyes see sensory information, and that is your eyes. And that sensory information goes in, in through your eyes, and there's a whole process for how the light reflects, and then it goes in through these nerves that go into the back of your head, and then finally get into your brain, <laughs> and then it gets into certain areas of your brain. I, I'm not gonna go into too nerdy of a, you know, a, of a hardcore explanation to it, but it gets goes into one, it goes into many places in your brain. There's never one place in your brain that's just activated at a given time. There's many places. So, but for simplicity, I, I usually say it's just one area. But essentially, your brain takes that sensory information, processes it in one area, and then it puts it into a different area and comes up with a plan to react to that sensory information. So the first kind of process is your brain processes that information, all of that information together. Oh, I saw that guy charging me. It looks like he was charging me that fast. I ha and then, and now the second part it's of this process, it's never this simple in your brain, okay? And this is the reason why brain imaging, all that only tells you so much, but it's never this simple. But the second process is your brain is trying to interpret that information and come up with a plan. Oh, that that person is charging me with an MP5. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna pull out my DT. You know, like, that's my built-in plan. But essentially, the next process is it goes one step forward, like this way, and then your the sensory information now being processed into all your past experiences of that sensory sensory information. Essentially, you're trying to come up with a plan on how to deal with that sensory information. And then after you come up with the plan, after that part of your brain or that kind of part of your brain does come up with that plan, then the plan is activated. Now the activation part where you actually do the movement is very different, okay? So you have the plan, the plan gets executed. And then when the plan gets executed, it goes down the cord, like this primary tract, uh, down your spine on like your, like, uh, your central nervous system. And then it's got, you know, it goes all the way down. And then that information or that activation part of your brain is literally telling all the Creative muscles in anxiety. your body to so, react to that chair, movement. One okay, chair, so the plan one chair, is now being activated chair, and sent chair, down one. the brain into the central nervous system through nerves that, that are within your spinal cord that branch out into all your muscles in your body. And then now I go, okay, I have to flip my DT and point here to hit the guy while he's flying at me, okay? While he's charging at me, flying at me with my underscore DT. TTV. And so, so that 
action muscle plan memory goes decreases to all the muscles that with are aging, well, I takes, guess. It takes my elbow extensor muscles. It takes Creative shoulder anxiety. rotation muscles. It takes my body chair, to one turn. Chair, one my neck chair, to look. One chair, all one those chair, muscles one chair, are part one of that plan to react chair, to that one move. WD and so you can imagine how many muscles there really are. I, you know, I'm simplifying it. Many, many, many muscles to do one movement, right? Well, those many, many, many muscles all get came from that action plan to do the movement. All right, that was a long process, wasn't it? And that's what your body has to do every time you do a movement, which is amazing. Uh, it, it's fascinating, and it gets way more complex than that. But because of that complexity, and because of there's there's all these steps in this process, the answer is yes to your question. You do have a smaller. You, you do. You are. Your reaction time is going to get worse. But it's going to get worse for different, different reasons. Right? First off, it's going to get worse because you're Set. processing hey. all of those steps I mentioned here. Processing the sensor. First off, maybe your eyes, like mine, are horrible, Set. right? You're aging What's with happening? age. Your eyes get worse at taking in the information. That's number one. Number two, your brain could be worse at processing the information. Number three, you could be worse at coming up with the action plan because maybe you're not as experienced as someone who's a younger kid who grew up with all these video games their whole life. Uh, it's based off your past history, right? You're not a gamer. You're not a you're not a sport person. You're not an athlete. This this game is athletic, and then the you're then you have to send the action plan down now. You're talking about the muscles, and as you know, and I'm sure everyone knows, the less you exercise, like I'm a fat motherfucker right now, like the less you exercise, the more, like the the worse your muscles get. Lay terms, your muscles deteriorate. Okay, and there's I can go into the physiology of muscles all day, but essentially your muscle strength, the rate of activation. Is all going to get worse, all right? So the rate of activation, how fastly you can activate it, is going to get worse, because your body acts, your your brain, all the neurons in your body, your your muscles are connected to that messaging system through neurons. That that system gets worse when you don't use it. You use it or you lose it. That is a serious concept in neurology, neuroscience. And that's why we Excel always try Guerrero, and get people who are older in, involved in said, as many activities as possible when they're in, for example, in an old folks' home, right? Law. When you don't use it, you lose it. And that's why I'm, I'm really into exercise. I do rehabilitation, for example. I don't do cognitive rehabilitation per se, but I definitely do physical rehabilitation. And so if you don't use it, you lose it. So those neurons in your muscle are going to degenerate from you not losing it. And the cool thing is if you... Do training like to play the game for a month that actually is the first thing to improve and that's probably why you get better at the movement so if I teach you the DT flick tomorrow or today and then a week from now you all of a sudden your DT flick got amazing it's probably because the neural activation to the muscle that's for you uh, that's a, that's an extra tip but yes so the muscle deteriorates the, the strength of the muscle the power activation of the muscle the rate that the muscle can activate all of that stuff can deteriorate. This is a very, very physical game. This is not Call of Duty where you sit and click on a mouse and keyboard. Literally, when you play key, you know, computer games, this is all you got to do, right? Move a mouse, that's it. That's so minimal movement as opposed to me doing a, doing a DT flick, climbing, spinning around. And, and at the highest level of play, this game is a sport. Like, I, I do think it is an actual phys activity. I know that was a really, Set. really long VR question. Answer different. to your question, but that is the truth to that question. Yes, your reaction speed time does get slower, but there's a lot more in reaction time than you might think of when you just hear the term reaction time.